So we finally made it to the end of season seven. The best season so far. Things can only go up from here. <laughs> like season six, the season had a weak start with Descent Part Two. If there's one thing I didn't need to see more of, it was Brent Spiner's overacting. And I thought at the beginning, well, there's nowhere to go but up, but sadly, I was mistaken. If you thought you were getting a lot of Brent Spiner overacting in that first two-parter, Masks made sure you weren't disappointed. Masaka might have been awaking, but I was falling asleep. <laughs> My first episode to not get a crap rating was Dark Page, but even that was surrounded by D's and F's. I thought this season had, maybe I'm wrong, but it seemed like there were more episodes that we disagreed on. And that was one of them, which I did think was better than the episodes that came before it, but I still didn't think it was great. The theme of this season was the crew's family members. We had Lore in Descent Part 2, we had Jordy's mom in Interface, we had Troy's little sister in Dark Page, we had Data's mom in Inheritance, we had Worf's new kids in Parallels, we had Worf's brother in Homeward, we had Beverly's grandmother in Sub Rosa, I'm going to consider Wesley a relative because he hasn't been around for over a season in Journey's End. We had Worf's future son in Firstborn. We had Picard's fake son in Bloodlines. And Emergence is kind of all of their child, I guess. And All Good Things was dealing with their future relationships. Which actually, if Leah Brahms married Geordi in the future and they changed the events of the future, does that mean they didn't end up together after all? I guess we'll find out in Picard. Maybe that's why Geordi was trying to stop them. Maybe this anomaly's okay. <laughs> There were also a lot of data exploration episodes too. Exploring his dreams, exploring his family, exploring his memory, exploring his multiple personalities. And we've had a lot of those over the course of the series as a whole, but they never feel like they leave a lasting impact on data or the show in general, really. With the exception of the introduction of lore. If I look at data from season one compared to data at the end of the show, they act like there's been this huge amount of growth. Yeah, we had that scene in All Good Things where we saw Data in the past and Picard was kind of smirking about how simple he was back then, but it's the exact same thing. It's understanding an idiom. Okay, that's not something that takes seven years to figure out. Yeah, it's not like he learned how to use contractions. That completely alien concept that the super intelligent robot can't figure out. <laughs> I was surprised that this season had so few episodes centered around Picard, and one of them was shared with Beverly. And that was one that I liked more than you did. Well, you just like Beverly a lot. But I thought that their relationship over the course of the show, I liked the way things kind of developed, and you feel like it really wasn't there. I felt like they just stuck in these things at random points to be like, yeah, it's still a thing, and then totally forgot about it. It didn't feel organic. And it took what? Them to have those chips in their brains or whatever? What? Why were they <laughs> attached? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't a great episode as a whole. I liked their relationship in that episode, but I do feel like they've had something behind the scenes through the whole show. I feel like it's kind of a parallel to Troy and Riker, where it, it does pop up every once in a while, but for the most part it's kind of in the background. But I feel like it's always there to some extent. I'm, I'm always aware of it. Maybe it's just residual effects from the naked now. It just never wore off. Yeah, it's too bad they didn't do a callback to that episode. And I think that was another theme of this season, was doing a lot of callbacks to earlier episodes, but not in a way where it felt like, hey, let's develop something a little bit more that we introduced earlier. It felt more like a desperation move of how can we keep people interested and make it feel like we're developing something. And not really doing anything new with it either, or anything particularly interesting. I think of, like, the episode with Picard's fake son, which called back to such an early episode that really had no lasting effect in the first place. But that's the thing, is they could have made those work. They could have built on them and made them more interesting, but they feel like such standalone episodes. And that's also disappointing, given that earlier seasons did have more in the way of ongoing plot lines. And this season is just, here's a random episode, here's a random episode, here's a random episode. Yeah, and a lot of them were half-baked ideas that somebody just wanted to push out because it was the last chance, and they said, whatever, we'll just fill in the rest as we go. At least season six had some fun ideas, even if they weren't executed very well. This season felt like more of a slog, especially the last quarter. I agree, 
I will say that although there are some really bad episodes in this season, I think the bigger problem is that there just aren't that many that are good. There are too many that are just forgettable and generic and just as soon as they're done it doesn't matter. I thought the Wharf episodes were going to be in the Shining Beacons because they were usually ones that we both looked forward to, but this season not so much. And again, that was something where earlier seasons would use Worf as a character to explore the Klingon Empire as a whole. But in this season, we didn't really get development of any of those kind of side elements of Star Trek. Even the Cardassians barely showed up at all in this season. The crutch when they were running out of ideas was, well, how can we work time travel into this story too? Yeah, and it sticks out to me, especially given that I'm watching Deep Space Nine at the same time. When that show is developing, for example, the Cardassians a lot and the Bajorans, and it feels like it is fleshing out a world a lot more. And then you go back to TNG, where those ideas were introduced in the first place, and it feels like they're not even trying to do anything like that. It's very disappointing. Which is ironic, because Deep Space Nine does not move. <laughs> yeah, this show has literally unlimited storytelling potential, but they keep going back to the same things over and over again, which I do blame specifically on the writers because it feels like they just don't have ideas, and it doesn't feel like they are interested in fleshing out the world anymore. Yeah, they're ready to move on to the next thing, but this thing isn't over yet. And there's no reason they couldn't have made this something that went alongside Deep Space Nine in a way that felt like it mattered. It's not like people are going to be watching Deep Space Nine, but not watching Next Generation when it's a spin-off from Next Generation. So why not use that to, you know, play off of each other more? We had some haphazard character wrap-ups in Wesley and Roe, and I would have been fine with Wesley not having one. He was not a character that I wondered what happened to him, and his send-off in whatever episode that was in the desert was fine. I felt like that was the end for him. Was that before or after the, uh, the first duty? Because I think that was before. Oh. See, that I don't even know. <laughs> he was even in the game. Yeah, the fact that we can't remember when we last saw Wesley because he made, you know, he doesn't make a huge impact. And having it be such a weird ending for him, it, it didn't feel like it worked. It, it came too much out of nowhere, even though, again, they were calling back to the Traveler and all that. It still didn't feel natural. And I noticed Wesley did not mention to the Traveler, hey, I killed a kid not too long ago. <laughs> Am I still good to be a super god or whatever? Rose Sendoff was better, but it stood out because she wasn't around for a really long time. And that episode stood out because that was one of the rare ones that did feel like it was developing the world more, with the Maquis being involved. We did have some character surprises, though. Dark Page gave us more depth than I thought the Loxana character was capable of. But the fact that she's a side character, and that's one of the stronger episodes, is not good. Yeah, that's the thing, is so many of these episodes that are focusing on these individual characters... They still feel like they just came up with a random idea and assigned it to a random character. I think of even Riker's episode, The Pegasus, which I thought was a good episode, one of the standouts of the season, doesn't feel like it ends up mattering for Riker, when it really should. Well, I'm going to go bigger. This season, again, had all these grand ideas that would have a huge impact on everything moving forward, but they just get shrugged off. There was that whole episode dedicated to how warp travel, the thing that everybody does all the time, is destroying the galaxy, and they don't even take it seriously through the episode in which it's introduced. And then it was weird, and I guess kind of respectable, that they brought it up again a few times, but only to say, nobody cares, go as fast as you want. Yeah, and I do think on the writing side, in the first place, introducing that idea was a mistake, because that's just a pointless crutch to have to get around later. If they were going to do that, they should have done it in a way where it was a way of generating story ideas. Maybe they could even use that to come up with some new technology that would then take things in a different direction. Yeah, here's your chance to use this idea to make other ideas, and they just say, no thank you. So guest characters, we had Lore and Hugh, we had the three emoticons, <laughs> Jordy's hollow mom, wait, she was actually an alien pretending to be Jordy's mom, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. Or some energy being? I don't know. Yeah, and he was just seeing her through the VR interface. Oh, that's right. I still haven't bought one of those yet. We had the Mercs in Gambit, that two-parter, with their anger gun, or whatever that thing was. Such a memorable story that was totally worth devoting two episodes to. And a total waste of Richard Lynch. We had the Miners and the Troy Cake. <laughs> 
guest characters. <laughs> <laughs> Loxana in that episode with Kirsten Dunst and her dad, the 1950s. He's just a whole decade. <laughs> <laughs> the Kess and the Prit, those two factions on that planet that were fighting each other. Mrs. Slowdown. <laughs> Data's robot mom. Oh, I fell off a cliff. You're fine. Okay. Worf, 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 and Worf. <laughs> what should have been the coolest episode of the show? John Locke, Paulie, Cicero, Space Ghost from Beverly's Coast to Coast. <laughs> that didn't even make sense. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Bunch of good for nothing kids. Don't know the value of a hard day's work. <laughs> Jaden Data. And what was the little girl's name? Radioactiva? Ah, I can't remember her name. It was pronounced Radioactiva. Sati? Was it Sati? Or no, was no, the Sati was from, that was the drum hit. J- J- oh, God, it's right on the tip of my tongue. <laughs> like, like <sighs> damn it. Okay, we're going to get it, and I'm not going to look it up. Tia? Something like that. G- Gia? Gia. That sounds right. If it's not, we're going to say it is. <laughs> Masaka and Corgano. Did you remember their names or did you have to write those down? No, I remember that name. You can't remember Brent Spiner being a freaking weirdo. I remember Masaka, but that's I don't remember Corgano for sure. Because he always said it in his weird old man voice. Oh man, don't remind me of that. Boggs, Spider Barkley, Wesley, and his creepy ass stalker. I've been following you for almost a decade, just watching you. Future Alexander. Bach and Picard's rock climbing son. Jason? Yeah, Jason Vigo. The crazy straws. Ro, that traitorous bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and Q, without Shang Tsung. Yeah, thinking about Ro, they gave her an episode that felt like something that would be going forward, but they probably already knew that she was never going to come back which perfectly encapsulates the approach to these episodes in this season. Picard only had four episodes centered around him, and one of them, like we said, was shared with Beverly. Troy only had one, which was Eye of the Beholder, which I thought was one of the more interesting episodes. It was an interesting approach. That's the best thing you could say about that episode, probably. I liked when the guy jumped into the thing. Well, okay. (laughs) Okay, there's two good (laughs) things about that episode. Data had five which is not uncommon. He usually has a lot. Uh, and I would say too many. Especially given that he is literally the one character that changes the least, as we've been saying. But you're still giving him the most episodes. Riker only had one, but it was good. It was the Pegasus. And Riker, over the course of the show, hasn't had that many episodes focused on him. And usually when they are, he's just kind of the one who happened to be in the situation. Mostly because Picard is removed from whatever situation they're in. Jordy had one, which was Interface, with his fake mom, which I guess is better than some crummy romance weird thing. Yeah, that's true. Beverly had two, attached with Picard, and then Sub Rosa. I wonder how she felt, you know, because they booted her off after season one, and then she came back, but then she's left with this kind of crap. Yeah, I know at some point she was requesting getting kind of more action, and they did give her more to do, I feel like, over the course of the show, but... She did get some action, though, if you know what I mean. (laughs) Worf had three parallels again, which should have been super duper good. I can't even remember what grade we gave that. Uh, I know they were pretty low. Team episodes, there were three. Liaisons, Genesis, and Emergence. And then side characters, we had five. We had Dark Page with the Luwaxana. We had the Force of Nature, which was the Warp people. Lower Decks, which I felt focused more on the junior officers. Journey's End, which was Wesley, and Preemptive Strike, which was Roe. Having all good things be a Picard-focused episode, I might have kind of talked about this a little bit before, but I feel like that was a mistake. I would have wanted something that gave all the characters a bit more in the way of closure. Yeah, I would have preferred that be a team episode, where he's kind of removed from the situation, and they all have to work together. Yeah, and it felt like they kind of tried to do that with their future selves a little bit, kind of showing you how they've all changed but I wanted something for them to do in the present a little more. Or maybe even the past. Yeah, I mean, again, having Yar in there but not doing anything was disappointing, and even O'Brien. 
So what was your favorite episode this season? There were a few episodes that I really liked this season. I liked the Pegasus a lot. I'm going to go with Lower Decks as being the one that stood out the most as not only being a good idea for an episode, but the actual execution being really good. Because I feel like a lot of ideas for these episodes are not bad in themselves, but then they kind of drop the ball in the actual writing of the episode. But this was an episode that carried it through. And I think part of it is because they were forced to write for new characters. Right, I feel like it gave them more freedom to kind of play around with things. And it helps that they were able to kind of have a sense of humor with the way they looked at the main cast and not try to make them all look like they're perfect and, you know, the the beloved characters that we all know over seven seasons. And I think those are the episodes that you and I typically grade higher because of that fact. You know, when we look at these main characters as real people, like when Barkley shows up and he has real problems and these people are like, oh God, we don't even know what to do. Yeah, I definitely think those episodes tend to stand out. And it, when you mentioned Barkley, I wish he had done more this season. Even back when he was first introduced, it felt like kind of the same thing as those characters in Lower Decks, where they're able to look at the main cast from a different lens. And again, that's a perfect way to generate story ideas, but they only do it for those individual episodes every once in a while. I'm also going to go with Lower Decks for this season. We are nowhere near the level of episodes that came out in earlier seasons. I think Preemptive Strike is one that, if they had just made a little bit of changes, it could have ended up being a really good episode, too. Same thing with Parallels. Yeah, I think the risk with Parallels is that they would have had to find a way to make the sci-fi elements make sense, and these writers don't really seem to care about that. You know, I gave a bunch of great alternate universes back when we talked about that episode. Yeah, if the science isn't going to make sense, they can at least play with the ideas in a fun way. But even then, a lot of the episodes in this season feel like they kind of come up with the idea and then are just struggling to write a story around it. This series, as it has gone on, has spent so much time trying to explain things, but the explanations don't make sense. And that ends up taking up so much of the episode. What was your least favorite episode of season seven? There were a lot that I thought were pretty bad. And I think most people would agree. And keep in mind that least favorite is not the same thing as the worst. That's true. And I think Sub Rosa is a great example of that, where people often say it's the worst episode. It's a ridiculous episode, but I definitely don't think it's the worst. I would have to go with Masks for this season, because I didn't think there was a single element of that episode that actually worked. The idea felt like a typical TNG idea, but the execution of everything along the way was just awful, and especially all those Brent Spiner performances. And yes, I've seen the video of him talking about it. Still, it's not a good episode. So what was your least favorite episode this season? This is tough, because there were a lot in this season that were just duds. Let me make a guess. I think you're going to say Journey's End. How did you know that? (laughs) It was an entire episode about a character that hasn't been around forever, and who I didn't care about in the first place, and giving him this huge arc that ended with him becoming this omnipotent being felt so pointless, and then he was gone. Was Guinan in this season at all? Speaking of potentially omnipotent beings? Because I really wanted to learn more about her, and I especially wanted her to show up in the finale. Especially if Q was going to be there, yeah, but we didn't get any of that. She could do another tiger crane, or whatever the hell she was doing in that other episode. And I realized that they could only use her when, you know, when Whoopi Goldberg was available and that kind of thing. But it's it's just disappointing. They could have just used past footage of her reaction shots. And just, well, they could cobble together audio when she's not on screen and just, you know, make up sentences. Hey, Picard, what are you doing? (laughs) (laughs) But, you know, in a Whoopi Goldberg voice. I mean, they kind of did that with Riker for past Riker. Yeah, should have given them some ideas. I do want to mention that when we talked about the episode Genesis and we said that these characters devolving should all be devolving to the same common ancestor because of the chase. Well, I just want to say that we were wrong about what they actually said in the chase. And people have commented this, and you guys are right. In the chase, they said that all these different races were directed toward a common form, but they were not coming from a common ancestor. So you guys are right. We acknowledge our error. And as penance, we will accept your Patreon subscriptions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's difficult, but yeah, I guess we'll have to put up with it. It's a price you're willing to pay. <laughs>
Oh, we didn't talk about uh, the Troy and Worf relationship. See, that felt more organic to me, even though it was all built on lies and alternate universes and turning into animals and stuff. Yeah, I, I kind of agree. I knew going in that that was going to pop up at some point, and it sounded like a really bad idea, but I actually liked how it came about. I was surprised. And see, they could have had Loxana show up and found out about that and shown how she would have reacted to all of that. I think that would have been interesting. Yeah, even that subplot alone, I feel like, could have generated a lot of good episodes, but they didn't focus on it, really, um, apart from, like, once or twice. Yeah, like, she could make some insulting comment, and he would be like, go jump in a lake. And then she would start bawling and just collapsing <laughs> in a fetal position. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> That's awful. So we're going to do a full series overview video. And we for sure will be going on to the TNG movies. And I'm legit looking forward to that. I want to see what they're going to be like. I'm really curious. Well, the first one is Star Trek Generations. So look forward to that. And then Deep Space Nine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I should say I am going to keep watching Deep Space Nine. And whenever I finish a season, we will talk about it in our What We Watched videos. But as of now, I don't think we're going to do an episode by episode. Right. This has been an enormous undertaking for both of us. I just want to go back to 2019, just shake myself and say, why? Why would you do this? <laughs> but it has been fun at the same time. Yeah. And we hope you guys have enjoyed coming along with us. That sounds so corny. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, and we appreciate you guys joining us on the journey. No, that's even worse. <laughs> all the way to the journey's end and beyond, because there were a few episodes after that. But all good things. Oh, man. This whole conversation is a dark page in my life. <laughs> <laughs>